introduce him. My last announcement is this. Six Star, LLC, subsidiaries, and any future holding company, we make no medical claims, health claims, nor any other claims about our premium sanitary pads. The testimonies you hear are from actual users of our product and their personal experiences and results that will vary from person to person or user to user, which may or may not reflect the views of our company and its brand. So at this time, I want to bring to the line Mr. Genius himself, the one and the only Dr. Tyrone Malloy out of Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Malloy, would you please hit six and come on the line, sir? Star six. Are you there, Dr. Malloy? Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, sir. It's all yours. Take it away. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, that, that introduction, uh, it kind of, it, it makes it difficult for me to sit in this chair comfortably because uh, you built me up so. But, but I would like to say, to start off with, that I'm very much excited uh, and, and, and fortunate, and that's really the best word, fortunate to be involved with truly part of, uh, of history. Uh, and I say that to say, and a lot of you have probably done your own research about graphene. I'm going to spend a good part of the morning, at least during my, my presentation, speaking about graphene because that's something that we need to understand is the wonder material that's going to make our sanitary napkin, okay, not only something that's functional, but something that's actually therapeutic. And that's important. Okay, so when we're talking to young ladies about sanitary napkins, we know that the main reason why someone buys it is basically to absorb their menstrual flow, make them feel comfortable. And we also know that the pads and the pads or the pads that are on the current market have not done that job efficiently. And so we have been subjected, okay, to using something that's been inefficient and unhealthy. And we are part of history in that we're going to be bringing to North America something that women need and something that will prevent some of the problems that they've endured as well as treating conditions that they felt they had to go see a doctor about, but simply could have used something just this environmental that would have helped a lot of their conditions. So I'd like to spend just a few minutes speaking about graphene because that is something you're going to hear more and more about over the next few years. And since our dual premium sanitary napkin has graphene chip infused into the polymer, okay? That's why it's important when we're talking about it to understand what is graphene. So I'm gonna spend just a minute or two speaking about that, and then we'll talk about some of the conditions that how the graphene is going to help and how the pad in general is going to prevent some of the problems that our women have, have accepted earlier endured. Graphite, everyone's familiar with it. It's a pencil. The pencil lead is graphite. Graphene was actually discovered back in 2004. And just through a process of taking graphite, they actually took graphite, rubbed it on a piece of paper, they made a, uh, a mark, and they took tape, just scotch tape, and were able to keep separating and separating the graphite so they got it down to one atom thick. One atom thick is invisible. Essentially, it's invisible. But that one atom thick in the in a sort of a the matrix that it was in, they found that that particular material was stronger than steel and diamond. Okay, had flexibility, was a thermal conductor, and they realized that they were upon something, and obviously lightest or get up, they were onto something that could change the industry technologically, and now we're seeing how many medical benefits that graphene can have. Now, graphene comes in different forms. 
So when you read about graphene, you'll hear about graphene oxide, you'll hear about graphene flakes, you'll hear about graphene powder. All that means is different forms of graphene. And what is all part of what we now call nano medicine. And nano is just a word meaning it's one billionth of a meter. Okay, so it's extremely small and nanoparticles are being used for everything. I'm sure that you remember us talking about nano silver and pads uh, in the past and being nothing more than silver, okay, being able to treat bacteria. Well, nanoparticles has revolutionized medicine. And where graphene has been so beneficial is that it has more flexibility Okay, it can do things that other nanoparticles cannot. So what graphene can do, okay, and what infused in, in into our dual premium sanitary napkin, it can actually destroy the bacteria that normally is in the woman's vagina that comes out during the time of her cycle that in the past just sits there on this pad that's not absorbing much of anything, in 20 minutes, the bacteria is already multiplying. There's nothing stopping it, okay? And so exponentially, okay, the woman is developing a toxic environment, okay, on her external genitalia, okay? And with that toxic environment, okay, comes the problem, the irritation the discomfort, the redness, the swelling, the inflammation to the point in some women causing pain. Well, that psychologically has an impact because every month that woman knows those dreadful days are coming. And so even two to three days before, her whole psyche okay, may be affected by the impending discomfort and irritation that she has to endure every single month. Okay, so, it's, and, I, and I tell, I, I, people have heard me say this before, that men don't realize how fortunate we are, that there's nothing, nothing that we have to endure every 28 to 30 days that's discomforting. Okay, and yet women have to do this as part of their life. And so by our premium sanitary napkins being able to introduce something that's going to change how women feel about their psyche, about their cycles, rather, their psyche being affected by the cycles, it's going to make a major difference in how people approach that part of the month, their whole manner of how they feel about do I really have an infection? Guess what? I don't. What I thought was an infection was nothing more than inflammation, irritation by these unhealthy, ineffective sanitary napkins that's been allowed to be on the market for all these years. So we are going to be the vanguard of actually changing how women will deal with something that's inevitable for 30, 40 years of their life. So I, I'm, I'm extremely excited to be a part of that future. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about uh, with respect to the graphene is that the graphene is it's carbon. It's, it's a carbon particle. Like I said, it's part of graphite. But it's also being looked upon as a potential anti-cancer therapy because the fact that it has the ability to be a biosensor, meaning nothing more than it can sense whatever we're directing it to sense. If we're asking it to look for a cancer cell, it can do that. If we're asking it to look for chemicals that are in the bloodstream before someone has a heart attack, we can do that. What we're finding out about graphene it has so many applications that the, the most exciting one is the one where they're looking at using graphene as a biosensor to actually treat cancer as 
well as detecting cancer. So this is the same graphene. It's not like there's a concentration that's going to be higher, okay, in one thing than something else. It may be in a different form, but it's the same graphene that will be in our pad. It's the same graphene that's going to be used as an anti-cancer treatment, as well as, as I said, a cancer detecting, excuse me, a cancer detector. Now, people have asked me about the relationship, okay, between uterine fibroids, endometriosis, and graphene or sanitary napkins. Well, I'm going to kind of separate. This is one of those situations where I'm not, I'm going to say what may cause fibroids, endometriosis, excessive bleeding. Let's, let's speak about that since that is an area that, again, is commonly discussed and we need to at least all be on the same page. They know there's enough statistical data, there have been enough studies showing that toxins absorbed into the body can affect the receptors, can affect aspects of the uterus and of the pelvis that can lead to conditions such as endometriosis, uterine fibroids. They know this. Now, where do those toxins come from? Well, a lot of them will come from ordinary, when I say ordinary, common items or things that women have used, perfumes, okay, certain douching agents, and the most important, that's getting the most publicity, dioxin from the coronation process, okay, the bleaching process, okay, of the material used for the sanitary napkins that are on the market. We know dioxin is a carcinogen, okay? And I don't want us just to focus on dioxin. There are a lot of other toxins and chemicals. There are thiolates, okay, that's also in these pads that are on the market, as well as in tampons, as well as in, in, in feminine sprays. A lot of the things that we're doing to our body, we're introducing agents that studies have shown can be, I'm not saying always, because there's a lot of times diseases are multifactorial as far as cause. So I'm not going to sit here and say that those are the only reasons why someone may have endometriosis or fibroids or yeast infections or bacterial infections, but we know that these agents are contributing factors to those conditions. So if we can eliminate, if we can eliminate at least that which we can eliminate, we it just it, it's reasonable to assume that the incidence of those conditions would be less. Not only that, if we can eliminate those factors earlier in our age, in our reproductive age, then that's less exposure. So it is, and I know we talk about this all the time, it is so important that we get these messages out to our adolescents, okay, that we get these messages out to our young adults because their exposure time can be interrupted in the beginning as opposed to many who've already been exposed 20, 30 years of these toxins and the conditions have already set in their bodies, that there's not a lot we can do to reverse that. We can decrease the incidence going forward, but as far as the damage that's been done, it's there. So it is so important for us to make sure that here's something that you can actually control. It's no, it's when you think about it, it's no different than those individuals who want to smoke and don't smoke or stop smoking. It makes a whole lot more sense if you never smoke. But if you are smoking and you stop, at least you're not continuing to introduce a toxin that's having del deleterious effects on the body. Well, let's think of that the same way when you're thinking about sanitary napkins. The difference is with sanitary napkins, it is 
so close to the bloodstream. Those napkins are sitting there for five, six, maybe seven days continuously. Even when you're smoking, you're not smoking five, six, seven days continuously. But when that pad is there, those toxins, both from the pads and the toxins from the bacteria are all entering the body and having a basically a field day. And so we need to understand this. We have to stop that. And I'm just going to also spend a, a few minutes talking about, because someone asked me to make sure I talk about this, respect to why the sanitary napkins that we will be introducing will help with cramps, will help with the length and the amount of bleeding. And some of you may have heard me say this before. When you really think about what is a cycle, a cycle is nothing more than the lining of the uterus, okay, actually being sloughed off because there was no pregnancy, okay, to, to require that lining for its growth. So every month when you have a cycle, then most women realize, hey, I didn't get pregnant. And when you want to get pregnant, what is it? You don't want to have a cycle. That process is natural, okay? It is supposed to be. But that process is also based upon the environment. It's no different when you think about it. It's when you have a plant, depending on the amount of sun, the amount of water, that's going to affect that plant. Okay, so when you think about the lining of the uterus, since it is a sloughing process, and then there is a regrowth process, something is responsible for that. What? Oxygen. Oxygen is essential. One of the benefits of our sanitary napkins will be the fact that because it is a fabulous thermal conductor at the molecular level, so I say, and I'm, and I'm using that word meaning, I don't want you to put your hand on the pad and expect to feel some heat. Now, at the molecular level, that thermal conduction will enter the external genitalia, it'll enter the vaginal canal, it'll penetrate via the blood into the uterus, which means it will then open, dilate, expand, and those words you want to use, the blood vessel, which will then allow more oxygen to get to the tissues. And when more oxygen gets to the tissues, then those tissues will heal, repair faster, okay, and more efficiently. Well, if you're repairing something faster and more efficiently, that means the time frame is going to be less, which means the cycles will be less. That means the cramping will be less. That means the blood loss will be less. That means overall, most women, most women in the reproductive age range are either anemic or close to being anemic simply because the amount of blood that they lose every month is not replaced by their diet or by supplemental iron. So most women walk around here in a mildly or in some instances profoundly anemic state. And all of that contributes to well-being. It's a vicious cycle of life. And so by us improving the recovery from those cycles as far as blood loss, we're going to be increasing over a period of time that woman's hematocrit hemoglobin, which means her energy levels, her sense of well-being, all of that, it will be a product of the benefit of her not losing as much blood. And the fact, as I said in the beginning of the conversation, when I was talking about they now know that there are toxins that are responsible for endometriosis and responsible for uterine fibroids, if we can also, if we can, and I'm not, again, going to sit here and say that it is definitive, but if we can decrease either the frequency, size, or number of fibroids, that will translate into, again, less bleeding, less anemia, 
more comfort. So our sanitary napkin is in this particular instance versus pads that we have supported in the past will not only do what the average woman wants the pad to do, and that is to absorb her menstrual flow and pull it away from her body so she doesn't have all the irritation and redness and fungal and bacterial infections that she normally would have, but it's also going to provide some therapeutic benefit as the things that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I want to make sure that when we're talking to people about our sanitary napkin, and again, this is something they can research on their own, they will see how we are trying to truly make a difference in not just the woman's comfort, but we're trying to make a difference in her life by improving her health status with using something that she has to use every month for years. Now, I'm not going to spend more than a minute or so on this, but I would at least like to throw this out because I know it's something that we're going to be talking about in the future. But remember, sanitary napkins, okay, yes, traditionally are used for menstrual flow. But I'm sure there are a lot of people maybe on this line who are menopausal, perimenopausal, who also lose fluids by virtue of either urgency incontinence, stress incontinence, overactive bladder. There are men who are losing urine by virtue of having some of those same symptoms because of having enlarged prostate or having had a prostatectomy where we know one of the side effects from a prostatectomy is definitely incontinent. And so we have been, as they say, um, using napkins just as a protectant, okay, to collect any fluid. And those same women, perimenopausal women, or the men can also get that same irritation if they're using those same napkins, okay, as we say in medicine, off-label, to benefit or help with those conditions, they will also be able to use our pads to do the same thing or to help in the same way that they were using the other pads. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but it's realistic for me to at least mention that pads are used other than just for the menstrual flow. And so when we're using, when we, when our graphene premium sanitary napkins come on the market, okay, I think it's going to be June 1st, at least that is an area that we need to keep in mind. And, and, and sometimes you see, I get too personal, but I am in this particular case because I just want to be transparent. I had a radical prostatectomy in May of 2017. And as my urologist informed me, yes, I was going to have incontinence. And yes, I did. And yes, I used these napkins that we were endorsing, okay, within the last year or two. And it definitely helped. The graphene is going to have the added benefit, okay, of actually treating some of the conditions that may have predisposed some of us to some of the problems that caused us to have the surgeries that we've had. So I, I, I just want to throw that out there, okay? It's not something that we're making a, a big emphasis on right now, but it's something that you're going to hear about in the future. But the our, our sanitary napkins are, are, are <laughs> I, I, I laugh sometimes because I'm just so happy to know that we are going to make such a big difference in women's lives. Uh, and I, I don't want to you know, go beyond my time of, of, of speaking, but unless there's no specific questions, I would like to do, you know, give my time back to Ms. Gloria so she can continue saying great things about our company. Well, Dr. 
much, my Lord. Thank you so much. And if you need more time, you are welcome to continue. Well, I, I would okay. I would like to talk. Yeah, well, since you're giving me that, um, uh, some people have asked about tampon. Okay, we've had several people ask about that, and I guess everyone knows my position on tampons. But I want to speak as the medical voice, okay, of Jewel concerning tampon. We will not have tampon, and the reason we won't is that when you really think about why tampons came into existence. They came because the pads were inefficient. The woman was, the pad was just, the blood was, or Mr. Flo was just sitting there, making her feel miserable, constantly getting up, having to go to the restroom. And so they came up with the idea of plugging up the vagina so that blood could not come out so that the woman would not feel so uncomfortable. What they did was they basically robbed Peter to pay Paul. Essentially, they, yes, made the pad more efficient because some women still use the pad as well as the tampon, but at least they wouldn't feel that, that extreme discomfort. But then they made the toxin even closer to the bloodstream by having those tampons sitting inside the vagina. Okay, that, the purpose of that menstrual flow is to come out. It is not to reside in the vagina. And by residing in the vagina with the bacteria that's normally there, and every woman has what we call good bacteria and good yeast. When I say good, in the sense that neither one of them are, will cause a pathologic event as long as they are in balance. But when you introduced the tampon, which then held blood within the vaginal fall, it allowed the bacteria, to, it's almost like a smorgasbord, it allowed the bacteria to grow in such proliferation that the bacteria had to go somewhere. Okay, and it sought any exit that it could. And obviously, as you have read in the newspapers and magazines and, and, and other avenues of, of, of information, that bacteria went through the vaginal wall into the blood vessels and in some instances caused toxic shock syndrome, TSS. Now, obviously, when it's in an extreme, it can be fatal. But there are a lot of women who feel uncomfortable, who have low-grade fevers, who have pelvic pain, and some of that is related to an earlier phase of TSS that hasn't reached the point of fatality, fortunately. But the bottom line is we are introducing that condition ourselves. We're doing it by using tampons. And so uh, we, we decided a while ago that there is no way if on one hand we're trying to improve women's health, that we're going to turn around and produce something that is going to be deteriorating women's health. So tampons are out because of what I just said. Now, the other aspect from the standpoint of an environment is that most of the sanitary napkins on the market are made with plastic. It's like, a, it's like a, a bag that you wrap your groceries, you get your groceries in from Kroger or Publix. That's the backing, the backing of that pad. Well, as you know, if you try, if you try to, to breathe into those, okay, matter of fact, if you get your clothes from the cleaners, it even says, make sure you keep this bag away from infants and toddlers because of the fact that they could cause suffocation. Well, that's essentially what a woman is doing when she's wearing the sanitary napkin. That plastic, okay, is suffocating the external genitalia, okay, where air needs to actually flow, the air cannot. So now you have an environment of heat, moisture, and what does that do? 
it increases the risk of fungal infections, bacterial infections. And as I said earlier, we know that bacteria itself produces toxins. So from the standpoint of the pad itself, the ones on the market, no ventilation, our pad. Our pads will be ventilated. Our pads will allow air to flow so that women will not be plagued by those symptoms. From the environment perspective, plastic takes years to decompose. And I'm sure you've seen all the shows showing how plastic is all out in the oceans now, the problems it's causing for the environment. Our pads within, can, it's, it's almost like you could say they're biodegradable as far as the covering. Six months, that's it. They're gone. They're gone. Okay, as far as the material, all the material, it's gone. Comic pads, we don't even know how many years that plastic is around. So from the standpoint of the environment, we will be introducing not only a product that is going to be beneficial from the standpoint of necessity. It's going to be therapeutic from the standpoint of the ingredients, and it will be environmentally friendly, okay, to sustain what we want for society and life to be in the future. So we 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 are, we are the vanguard. We are the vanguard, and and everyone associated with Jewel should be proud. Okay, and excited on this on this road that we're on. Now, with that, Ms. Gloria, I, I think I'm I, I've said enough. All right, sir. Well, thank you very much. If you need anything else to say, you, we will listen. But thank you so much for taking out of your busy day to share all this valuable information with us. We really, really so heartedly, warm heartedly, thank you for doing that. Dr. Tyrone Malloy. You be blessed and have a great day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as, as I've said before, I must say again, Six Star LLC subsidiaries and any future holding companies, we make no medical claims, health claims, nor any other claims about our premium sanitary pads. The testimonies you hear are from actual users of our product and their personal experiences and results that will vary from person to person user to user, which may or may not reflect the views of our company and its brand. This session is no longer being recorded. Well, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to see 